The WWE are prone to insulting the intelligence of their fan base. Throughout their decorated history, they've done a number of things that have left fans scratching their heads as it's been evident that they think the majority of the fans are complete idiots. These things can range from WWE failing to mention established history or abruptly pretending like someone never existed. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times WWE treated their fans like complete idiots. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Erasing Chris Benoit. When it surfaced that the actions of Chris Benoit had led to the death of both Nancy and Daniel Benoit, WWE decided to declare that Benoit wouldn't be mentioned on WWE programming ever again. Therefore, other than my comments, there will be no mention of Mr. Benoit's name tonight. Since the summer of 2007, they've gone out of their way to outright erase Benoit from history, as he's never once been named or shown on WWE TV. Iconic moments such as Benoit winning the world title in the main event of WrestleMania 20 are virtually forgotten about, and even when discussing stats such as wrestlers who have won the Royal Rumble from a number one position, Benoit is always omitted. If he's been seen or mentioned, then this has usually come down to a mistake, but the mandate related to Benoit remains in full effect. This has split fans. Some believe that WWE should be able to mention Benoit's contributions to the world of pro wrestling, while some fans believe it to be the right move on the part of WWE, and ultimately it's in everyone's best interest that Benoit is never mentioned. Number 9. That's not the big gold belt. Upon the legendary Ric Flair signing with WWE in the summer of 91, he began to appear on WWE TV with the NWA world title, aka the big gold belt. Upon Flair doing this, Flair's former employee, that being WCW, were absolutely furious, and a lawsuit was issued. Whilst this lawsuit was ongoing, WWE would have Flair use a world tag title and literally pretend like it was the big gold belt on television. To add to the illusion, WWE would blur the title out whilst on TV, but fans at shows could obviously see that this wasn't the real big gold belt, it was the WWF tag belt. The most notable time WWE did this was at the 1991 Survivor Series event as Flair paraded the tag title around with conviction as the crowd looked on in utter confusion. Number 8. First time ever? WWE likes to rewrite their own established history. A lot of achievements like to be presented as first time only events when in reality it's happened before. One of the most infamous times this occurred was in 2014. The main event of the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view saw Seth Rollins take on Dean Ambrose, and the match would begin with Ambrose and Rollins brawling on the top of the cell structure. Michael Cole on commentary for whatever reason pretended like a cell match has never started in this manner. Cole would even ask JBL if he remembered a cell match starting with two wrestlers fighting at the top of the structure, in which he replied, no. This was insulting to the fans, as even the most casual fan knows of the iconic Mankind vs Undertaker Hell in a Cell match, which just so happened to begin at the top of the Hell in a Cell. Number 7. It's a miracle. Most fans are fully aware that WWE is scripted, and incidents such as wrestlers being set on fire or even being buried alive aren't real. WWE manages to keep their talent safe. However, when they deliver outlandish storylines of this nature, it's important to try and keep continuity and logic. Throughout the years, for whatever reason, WWE have treated their audience completely incompetently by presenting their talent to magically and mysteriously recover from grave injuries. Take for instance when Randy Orton had a fireball blown into his face in 2021. He would be forced to wear a mask as it was stated that Orton had suffered severe burns. However, just a few short weeks later, Orton would appear without the mask and it was as if he was never burnt in the slightest. Number 6. When is TNA? Whenever a former TNA star has joined WWE, they have made it their mission to outright refuse to mention their career in the rival company. When Sting debuted in 2014, his main storyline was with Triple H, and during this storyline, the game would fail to mention TNA. In fact, he would claim that Sting disappeared when WCW closed down in 2001. From WWE's perspective, they may be reluctant to mention TNA, but mentioning the fact that Sting attained tremendous success in another company isn't exactly going to make the iconic wrestler look bad, so it's insanely petty on the part of WWE. When AJ Styles finally signed with WWE in 2016, they had no problem mentioning his history in WCW and New Japan Pro Wrestling, but his TNA history was for all purposes erased. 
However, in 2019, it was brought up briefly in a feud with Randy Orton, and the reaction from the crowd was an indication that fans were fully aware of AJ's history in the rival organization, and it was completely pointless for WWE to ignore it. Number 5. Kevin Nash's Bizarre Text the Summer of Punk storyline was completely derailed at the SummerSlam pay-per-view in 2011 when Kevin Nash returned to WWE to attack CM Punk. Nash would later explain that he was ordered to take out Punk via a text message from Triple H. However, this storyline came to a nonsensical conclusion when it was revealed that Nash was the sole individual behind the attack on Punk, meaning that in theory he sent a text to himself. It was bizarre and a clear indication that WWE had zero idea where this storyline was going. Number 4. Vince McMahon Returns In 2022, the wrestling world was stunned when it was revealed that Vince McMahon had paid a number of individuals a considerable amount of money to keep several affairs under wraps. It was then announced that McMahon would be stepping down from his corporate role and Stephanie McMahon was named the new chairwoman of WWE. But instead of going away quietly, WWE quickly announced that McMahon would be appearing on that week's edition of SmackDown. This was extremely low as WWE were using this terrible situation to grab a ratings boost. Even worse was the fact that McMahon appeared on SmackDown and acted like everything was fine, which was a complete insult to every fan watching, as well as the women involved with the scandal. On the next edition of Raw, McMahon would once again appear, this time to introduce John Cena. McMahon had no business being on TV at this point in time and WWE genuinely believed that fans wouldn't be able to work out that they were just after a quick short-term ratings hit. Number 3. The Fake Razor Ramon and Fake Diesel When Scott Hall and Kevin Nash left WWE in favor of WCW in 1996, Vince McMahon believed that he could recast their Razor Ramon and Diesel characters. McMahon was of the misguided belief that fans wanted to see the characters that Hall and Nash portrayed rather than them themselves. WWE would use Rick Bogner as a fake Razor Ramon, whilst Glenn Jacobs aka Kane would play the fake version of Diesel. This died upon execution though, as nobody believed that this was the real Ramon and Diesel and even the younger members of WWE fanbase were baffled as to what WWE were actually doing. McMahon at this point in time clearly didn't have a clear grasp on how intelligent the audience was and this was yet another sign that they needed to change their strategy with their product and aim towards a much more in the know demographic. Number 2. Get the F Out In May of 2002, WWF would be illegally forced to change the name to WWE. This was because of the lawsuit initiated by the World Wildlife Fund and WWE simply had no choice but to change their last letter of their name. WWE's idea was to rebrand as well wrestling entertainment and they would inform fans that were getting the F out and focusing mainly on entertainment. WWE failed to mention that this name change was being forced on them despite the news of the name change dominating the headlines at the time. They believed that the fans didn't deserve to know the true details behind the name change which wasn't the smartest of moves as 99% of them were fully aware of the ins and outs of the well documented lawsuit. And number 1. The New WWE Champion WWE had huge plans for Lex Luger, in fact Vince McMahon was so impressed with Luger that he had initial plans to make him the next Hulk Hogan. After co-winning the Rumble with Bret Hart, WWE would tape an episode of TV which saw Luger steal the WWE title from Jim Cornette and proceed to show up to the ring wearing the WWE title. The idea behind this was to gauge fan interest and see how fans react to Luger as champion. But the problem was that Luger hadn't even won the title, so fans were just baffled as to why he was suddenly walking around as if he was now the champion. The fans failed to react at all to Luger with the title because it made no sense and McMahon executed this idea terribly. Fans were just perplexed as to what was happening and it was ultimately a terrible way to determine how interested fans are in a specific talent becoming the top guy in the company. When they have it folks, 10 times WWE treat their fans like complete idiots. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.